To explore the previous and next tutorial, click on the relative title. Up to this point, we have not maximized our use of Aspen's computational abilities. Oftentimes, in chemical engineering, we are faced with problems that have iterative solutions or iterative steps on the way to a desired result. We will be using Aspen to calculate the flow rate of a second feed stream of methyl isobutyl ketone in order to get the desired 19% purity of our water stream through the use of a design specification. During a design specification, Aspen iterates its calculation sequence through a range of values provided for an independent variable in order to obtain a specified result for a dependent variable within a certain tolerance. The most realistic separation results that we obtained in the last tutorial were based on using the NRTL thermodynamic method. Make sure your simulation is set to this base method and reinitialize your simulation. Add a second mixer and a second flash separation unit to your process flow sheet and rename them as you like. Connect the stream that is primarily water and acetone, the stream off of the bottom of the first flash separator, to the new mixer and add in a new feed stream of methyl isobutyl ketone that also feeds into the new mixer. Next, connect the product from the mixer to the new flash separation unit and add in the required product streams. Your process flow sheet should now look like this. Now open up the data browser window to update the inputs for the new additions to your process flow sheet. The new feed stream of methyl isobutyl ketone should have a flow rate of 50 libers per hour. It's a mass flow and we set it as liber per hour. A temperature of 75 Fahrenheit degree and a pressure of 50 psi. And we have to set the mass fraction as one for methyl isobutyl ketone. We can click on next. For the flash we have to set the temperature of 75 Fahrenheit degrees and the pressure. We can click on next again. Everything is ready and we can run the simulation. You should get these results. You will notice that we don't get the desired 19% purity of the water stream that is specified in the original problem description in tutorial 1. While we could simply rerun the simulation a few times to determine a feed rate of methyl isobutyl ketone that would give us the desired purity, we will instead program Aspen to complete the iteration for us before reporting the results. The goal of this second part of the tutorial is to obtain the desired purity. Select the flow sheeting options tab in data browser window and open up the design specs option. At the bottom of the screen, select the new button and choose a name for this design specification. For example, DS1, we leave the default name. You will notice that there are three areas where we must input data in order for the required input to be complete. These are the tabs, define, spec, and vary. In the define tab, the user must set the dependent variable that they are interested in. For our case, this is the purity of the water product stream, or max fraction of water. Select new at the bottom of this screen and name the new variable water. After hitting OK, the variable definition window will appear. In this window, we need to specify that we want our variable to be the mass fraction of water in the pure water product stream. In the type box, select mass fraction in the stream box that then appears, select your water product stream and under the component box, select water. For our purposes, we are now done inputting information into the define tab and can move on the spec tab. You will notice that we have three values we must input into this window. The first spec is the dependent variable 
that we want to set a target value for. This is the variable that we just defined in the define tab as water. Target is the numeric value that we would like our dependent variable to be equal to at the end of the calculation iterations. Our target value is 19% that is equal to 0.90. Finally, tolerance is how close the solution determined by Aspen must be to our target value before it's deemed acceptable. For our purposes, a tolerance of 0.1% is acceptable. This is 0001. To complete the input for our sensitivity analysis, we must input which variable is to be varied. This is done under the vary tab. In this simulation, we are varying the flow rate of methyl isobutyl ketone in the second feed stream. This is the stream we just added to our simulation. Under the vary tab, select the mass flow. Under the stream, select the stream that corresponds to your feed of methyl isobutyl ketone. Next, select methyl isobutyl ketone from the components list. The values placed into the manipulated variable limits boxes indicate the range that Aspen can use during these its iteration calculations. One thing to note is that the original input value under the stream inputs must fall within the range that is input here. Remember our original input was 50 libres per hour. For this tutorial input a variable range from 25 to 100 libres per hour. The other blocks that can be filled on this screen relate to the step sites that Aspen takes during its iteration calculations. It's not necessary for the user to input values into these blocks and we will use the default Aspen values. We are now ready to run the simulation again and check its convergence based on our input design specifications. Hit the next button at this time and you can see the run control panel. This panel indicates how many iteration has been made during its determination of the flow rate that met our design specification. If completed correctly, your simulation should have no warnings and no errors indicated in this window. You will notice that my simulation took five iterations to determine results that were within the specified tolerance. This is especially important now that we have introduced design specification into the simulation. Close the run control panel window and open up data browser to confirm that the simulation converged with the reasonable result. You will notice that the convergence option under the result summary tab in data browser window now has results. This window indicates the final value of the variable and the error associated with this variable. The error column indicates how far off the final dependent variable was from the specified value and the error tolerance column indicates how closely the design specification converged. A value of 1 in this column means that the simulation barely converged, while a value near 0 indicates excellent convergence. The final place where the user can get information regarding the convergence of a simulation is under the Convergence tab in the Data Browser window. In this window, one can actually see each of the values attempted by Aspen during its iteration cycle. Complete a cursory check of the other simulation results as discussed in tutorial 2 and if all of them look acceptable you have completed your design specification. You can try at home to achieve 95% purity of the water stream, modifying your existing design specification by changing the target spec and the range for the independent variable. In fact, if your upper limit is not increased above the final result, your solution may not converge. We have successfully completed this tutorial. Please explore the other video clicking here on the screen. Thank you. For further information, you can send an email or leave a message on YouTube. See you in the next tutorial. Bye.